Uh, welcome everybody. This is the City, uh, City Council's Select Committee to Study Barista Serving on Sea Boards and Commission. This is uh, June 23rd, 2022. This meeting is going to run on Zoom 7 to 8 p.m. And uh, we're going to start with the roll call. Pamela? Sure. Javier Luengo Grado? Here. Uh, Jana White? Here. Councillor Jamila Gore? Here. Councillor Garrett Perry? Here. Susan McDonald Bolanos. Here. And Cynthia Suarez. Here. And I just want to note for the record that Gwen Nabad has not joined us yet. Perfect. Thank you so much. As I said, this is a meeting that is going to be conducted on Zoom. It's being recorded. Um, we didn't add public comment to the agenda this time because I think that's something that we should talk today about if we're going to be adding or not public comment. Uh, my opinion is that we should, but that's something that we should sort of debate among the members. Uh, so one of, one of the things, and I want to open this, the floor immediately, because one of the things that we were talking last time was uh, about introductions, sort of talking about why, how we got here, who we are, from where we're coming from, and what we're hoping to to do with this with this uh, select committee, right? So I'm gonna just open the floor for anybody who wants to start uh, with introductions. I think that uh, you know because we're meeting on online and over Zoom, it's sort of it's 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 not easy to build rapport with others. So I think that you know having at least five to minutes to be able actually to to talk to each other, learn from where we're coming from, I think has a lot of value. So um, whoever wants to start, I'm not gonna choose anybody. So feel free to say whoever wanna. Are, are we doing a calling thing? I don't, I'm, I'm used to yeah. sitting up to where I have to bring yeah, Gary, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're doing it up, Gary. All right, well, uh, I'm Garrick Perry. I am the current Ward 4 City Councilor for Northampton. Um, I have lived in Northampton for 20 years. I have spent most of my time working downtown, um, a lot of service industry jobs and retail, everywhere from cook shop here to Sylvester's to Union Station. And a lot of what I did for the last 10 years plus was working at Bishop's Lounge in Northampton. And there, I was a bartender. I did, you know, I had security, but I also uh, ended up managing that place as well as booking events. Um, in addition to that work, I have been a local musician in the Alchemistics and the Problematics um, and, and a couple of other groups for over 20 years as well. Um, you know, and, and what brought me to this area, I originally came from the Maryland DC area. And I came here and went to Amherst College in 97. I graduated in 2001. And um, a lot of circumstances came together to keep me here. Um, I really love this city. And, um, you know, I've, I've been able to interact with it in only kind of one facet I saw, which was a lot of entertainment and nighttime stuff. And so during the pandemic, I decided that it would be a good time to you know, switch things up. And that's when I decided to run for city council. Um, and, you know, through that, I've had the pleasure of interacting with this lovely city in a, a whole different light. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's me. I also have two children who have gone to school in the Northampton school system. One has been in the public school system. She went to Bridge Street. She's now at JFK. And that is Logan. And my youngest has been at the Smith Campus School uh, for most of her school career as well. So I have a little bit of knowledge with both public schools and private schools. And uh, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Karen. That was really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Next person. Next person, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, yeah, Cindy Swopis, and I've lived in Northampton, I think about 35 years. I'm a Midwestern transplant. Um, I'm retired faculty from UMass. Um, I serve on the city's board of health. 
um, and um, have done that for about 10 years. So um, really enjoyed the challenge of um, maneuvering through COVID um, and all the difficulties of policy and practice and advisories and, and learning COVID. I'm also co-chairing a committee at Kelly Dickinson Hospital. So my sort of thing is health. I, got, I like working in all kinds of health fields and um, um, particularly, we just, I just left a meeting there tonight and um, just keep trying to remind folks in the world of health in Northampton that we, we during COVID, we keep talking about the at-risk population and we think of them as elderly and immunocompromised. And yet COVID has um, just decimated other demographics that we haven't even talked about, <laughs> you know, whether it be the houseless or people of color or people of a particular social economic background. So I'm, I'm really an interest, interested in, in making this community inclusive after serving um, seven months with Javier on the um, Northampton Police Review Commission. So I learned a lot there. Um, I'm particularly interested in this committee because I think we can improve the process. Um, the process not only of making it more welcoming, um, but also the, uh, no offense, Pamela, but the process at City Hall and, and how City Hall embraces and responds to applicants and, and have a more transparent process. So that's what, that's what brought me here. Thank you. Enjoy working with all of you. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Next. <laughs> Jamila. Um, I'm Jamila Gore. I'm a at large city councilor for Northampton. Um, I've lived in Northampton for about 16 years now. Um, I decided to be a part of this committee um, kind of. Uh, president uh, of the council, Jim Nash, kind of urged me to be a part of this committee um, because of, of my campaign and what I campaign on is more inclusivity in our city and uh, more more diversity in in overall. Um, and I think that that needs to start at the level of committees and commissions. And um, I think a lot of people honestly aren't aware of how many committees and commissions we have in our city and how they can participate. Um, and I think that needs to change. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to working on this and, and getting to know you all. And, um, and uh, yeah, so that's all I got. Thank you so much, Jamila. Next, Jana. Hey everybody, um, I'm Jana, as you know. Um, I am professionally, I work in the world of um, higher education administration. Uh, so I work for the Five College Consortium um, based out of Amherst. Um, I have lived in Northampton. I came here first to attend Smith and then left for a while and then have been back for the last 11 or so years. Um, for the last four years, I've been serving on the planning board and at present I'm the vice chair of the planning board and I'm also the planning board rep on the community preservation committee. Um, this past year I finished a master of public administration degree through Syracuse University so um, and part of the work that I did there was around um, collaborative governance and um, looking at um, how to make governance structures at all levels more inclusive um, with some particular focus on uh, sort of barriers to not necessarily to um, participating as board and commission members, but to sort of um, uh, substantive and satisfying public participation, particularly in the public comment process. Um, so not exactly the same, but certainly some transferable ideas and challenges and opportunities. So um, very excited to be here with all of you and, and sort of continue some of that um, academic work out in the field. Thank you so much, Jenna. Mara? Hi, I'm Mara or Susan, either one's fine. One is for my middle name, the other one's for my first. I don't have any preference. Um, I have, am part of the Human Rights Commission and I have been for a couple of years now. Uh, I'm also a senior at Smith College uh, who's studying government. Um, 
yeah, I think that a lot of what we focus on in the Human Rights Commission is inclusivity and diversity and all these um, issues that come to light, especially in commissions and stuff. And I'm really interested in, I guess, getting to the root of it and how we can change that. Thank you so much. And um, so my name is Javier Luengo. I'm originally from Chile. I had been living in Massachusetts in the US and specifically in Northampton for the last 14 years. Um, I work for the ACLU of Massachusetts. I am the person of the ACLU in Western Mass in charge of all the advocacy. I work with elected officials. I write uh, ordinances and I work with the state senators, representatives, city councils at large um, passing pieces of legislation and I run the campaigns from the ACLU and I'm a lobbyist for the ACLU, that's sort of my job. Um, yes, and excellent. When just came in, Pamela. Hey, what? we're doing introductions. Um, we're almost done, thank God you came in. So we're just talking about who we are, um, why we're here, what we're hoping. So feel free to share. Okay, sure. Um... Okay, so you want me to just share a little bit about myself or you want me to share? Um, my name is Gwen and I, I live in public housing in Northampton and I'm in very close proximity to a lot of single parents and um, folks with you know various challenges. And um, I've always been, I've been a single mom since I was 17 actually, and I'm 53 now, so. Over the years in Massachusetts, I've seen a lot of challenges in terms of um, overcoming barriers and things like that. So it's this is definitely something I was interested in participating in and being a part of. Um, in terms of like what I envision, um, um, I feel like there's some things that I learned just by living where I am in terms of like, you know, parents hours and things like that. And so I thought I could contribute. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Wen? What is that? If it's it's that's it. Well, for now, I'm I'm sorry to be late. First of all, I I just can't even believe how time slips away for me. Sometimes I have to set like ten alarms, um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm just glad to be here. So thank you. Excellent. It's, it's good to have you here. And it's, I'm, I'm pretty proud of um, serving with all of you guys. Um, so we're going to move in the agenda. So the next agenda item, it's minutes from previous meeting. I just realized that I was the, one, the only one who got the minutes and I didn't send it out to the group. So what we're going to do, we're going to table uh, the approval of the minutes. And the next meeting, we're going to approve this minutes in the previous meeting minutes, okay? So we're gonna do that. Um, so we're gonna table that. Um, can, I, can I just make a quick comment about that? Yes. So I, I know that the city councilors are pretty familiar with the interactive agenda. Um, and I'm not sure that other committees that other folks around are part of it, but I always attach my minutes to the agenda using a hyperlink. So if you access the agenda via the computer, you will be able to access any attachments right inside the agenda. Okay, so in the future, if you have an opportunity to review them in advance, um, they'll be there waiting for you. And just in case, I'm sending uh, the link for the agenda of this meeting. So you guys can just click that. Don't have to go back to your emails. You can just click it and see it. So, okay, so we're going to table the approval of the agenda. We're going to approve the next meeting. We're going to have an agenda item just to approve both um, the June 9 and June 23rd. So uh, we try to keep the, the agenda items for this specific meeting. We're trying to keep it really broad because based on the conversations that we had last time, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to talk to try to decide in which way we're gonna go, what, what are the things that we're gonna be expecting to do 
uh, from the conversation that we had, the, our first me organizational meeting, we talked a little bit about uh, goals, expectations, the, some data that we would like to see, the amount of people that are applying, people that are sending their sort of requests to certain different boards. Uh, you know, I would love to see the, the amount of uh, seats available or seats that are being used right now in commissions compared with the amount of people that are, are applying to it. And also, you know, talking to people who are sort of embedded into the process of it, right? From, from interviewing, from receiving all the documents uh, and sort of to have some clarity. So uh, in this specific agenda item, I would like sort of to understand a little more um, from all the things that we have been talking about, if, if specifically, is there anything that you uh, are interested that would like to see in the upcoming meetings? Because that's gonna inform for me and Jamila to draft a meaningful agenda, right? That is gonna make us sort of move forward in what we really want. And if we have these kind of conversations early on, uh, we can sort of be really proactive so at the end of our of the committee, the committee serving, we're not gonna have to meet like three times in a week to get things done, right? Hopefully no. So <laughs> I'm gonna open the floor uh, to talk a little bit about the things that we would like to see, the goals that we would like to be achieved. Uh, and this is really important for me in, in Jamila having in mind that we're gonna take all what we is gonna be discussed and we're gonna be working with you guys and we're gonna be drafting a final report, right? So I'm gonna open the floor. Uh, for the discussion about uh, goals, expectations, and, and other things that we, you would like to see. Feel free to raise your hand, whatever you need to do, and I call on you. When? Um, yes, I, I definitely think one of the goals should be to explore um, if people even know that a lot of these committees and board openings exist. Um, I think so many people don't even realize that they exist and there's so many of them. So um, I think that should be a goal is to sort of, you know, as we had discussed last week, sort of put it out there that these are open, maybe put something in the Gazette or, you know, something like that to, to show that these, these boards and committees exist. Um, and I, I, I will say the Zoom thing has been amazing for me. I mean, I've been able to, you know, I mean, a blessing and a curse, right? A curse and a blessing with the COVID because now all of a sudden it was like, if I wanted to get accurate news about what was going on, I could just come to a city council meeting because that tells me what's going on locally. You know, I, I don't have to watch big time media. So I also like that Northampton Open Media is is attending these and, and that they're recording them. I think it's wonderful. So I think accessibility should be another goal. Um, those are my two cents. Excellent, that's, that's really interesting. As you know, so far right now, um, the exemptions to the open meeting law are running until July 15. Right and 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 but and it, it, it's interesting because I, I was talking with uh, city council president Natch about this uh, in relation to accessibility, which is audience accessibility, the ability for for the community to be able to do public speaking and attend to the meetings uh, remotely, even though it could be a hybrid model. People can decide if they want to go to the chamber, or people can decide to just do it over any kind of video conference uh, system. Right. Uh, the community is not subject to open media law, right? So that kind of changes that you when you are talking when those kind of changes can be recommendations that we can we can give, uh, and the city council can act upon it, and you know they can they can sort of uh, uh, decide the change of rules in relationship to accessibility of attendance of the community. Um, sadly, the other side, which is accessibility of elected officials. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be heavily uh, determined by by uh, the possibility of an extension from July 15 to November. But so far, right now, July 15, uh, any any exception to the amendment middle law that provides the sort of the Zoom access and all that is after that it's gonna be gone. Gary. Yeah, so I think that brings something up that I, I would like to see a goal because I 
Uh, I'm on the flip side, you know, Gwen is, is here as a citizen and I am a newly elected official and I have reaped the benefits, I said before, of Zoom meetings. You know, I, I am one of the very few counselors who works a night job, who has to be, you know, in one place, but loves being able to communicate. And I, while I know that this is a statewide thing, I, one of my goals would be to keep this uh, accessibility for public officials going. And so whether that is a home rule petition or something like that, I would really like to look into that because I think the, um, you know, the impetus for this whole committee is barriers that prevent people from joining committees and doing civil service. Um, you know, and so for me, that that is a very important part of what we should be looking at is ways to maybe be a leader in how we conduct our government and how we engage with our citizenry as well. So, um, and, and, and a lot of the stuff that Gwen said, you know, I'm, I'm all for as well, you know, just promotion, you know, letting people know what's out there um, is also something that's really important. Cynthia? Um, I'm, I'm interested in really, <clears throat> um, see and i don't know how we would do this um what is stopping people from joining and um i don't know how we can take that pulse but um uh, one of the things that i'm exploring in another group that i'm in is compensation right um there's an organization that actually um has a compensation policy of and i'll just give the number um thirty dollars a meeting and it's all based on, you know, need, right? I mean, and if there were people on the particular board or committee that don't need it, then they don't go for it. But if, I don't know if compensation is an enticement or not. And um, before I was mentioning that to both Karen and Jim, and they're like, oh, we can't do that. We can't do that. But before we say we can't do it, <laughs> you know, there must be a way we can at least talk about it and explore it. Cause I don't know where the can't is. So. Is it, is it money? Is it um, distrust of the political process? What is it? You know, what are those barriers? Like you were talking about, Eric, um, people work nights or, or whatever. Um, so that's one thing I'm interested. The other thing I'm interested in having served, serving on the Board of Health under three different mayors, I've, um, I've been told that um, appointments are solely at the pleasure of the mayor, right? And so what does that mean? <laughs> Does that mean we have no impact? I mean, how do we influence that process? I know there's, and I'm going to, this might be pejorative, but I'm going to call it a rubber stamp committee of city council that, you know, the mayor wants to appoint someone, that mayor, he or she or they gives that name to this committee. And it's just kind of like, yeah, okay, we, if the mayor wants it, we'll appoint it, right? And so I'm just, I'm just interested in like, if that's true, if all appointments are at the purview of the mayor, how do we get, um, how do we talk about that, you know, and how do we, do we even have the mayor come here and say, okay, you're a new mayor. What are you looking for? How are you going to make those decisions? Are they political appointments? Um, so I might be pushing on some, you know, sensitive ground here, but if this is our job. Let's find out how it's been done in the past and what some of the philosophy of the current administration is. Well, I, I do remember, you know, um, we served for eight months in the Northampton Police Review Commission. There were weeks that we had 10 hour meeting, like three meetings and all together was 12, 10, 12 hours. And we have the, we have the police chief three times, we have a ton of people testifying for across the country, from Toronto in different sort of alternative to policing. So the, the value of people being able to attend. And, and, you know, and that makes me think, I mean, we can also look around Massachusetts cities, how the other cities are doing this, right? Uh, maybe we find out that a city is doing it in the right way. We want to sort of having somebody from that city to come and testify and, and give them answer questions, right? Or, or, or different state, how they were able to do it. I mean, you know, I'm a firm believer that good things are happening. 
and you know we don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> Jen. Uh, so on that note, I did see recently, just within the last, since our last meeting, there was an article in the Gazette about Amherst having a hard time filling appointments in their committees and also not getting the kind of uh, diversity of applications and, and representation there. Um, and so I think there may be an opportunity for us to talk even with our neighbors about, you know, what's going on there. And um, one of the things it said, suggested in the article that they had been trying some new efforts and not seeing any results, and it's not necessarily the case that what doesn't work at Everest won't work in Northampton, but I think it would be useful to have a conversation um, with them and, and see um, you know, if there's anything to be learned from them in addition, as you said, to other communities in Massachusetts and elsewhere. Um, my experience on the planning board relative to Zoom has been that our public participation numbers did go up a lot and that much of the representation that we saw in those increased numbers looked a lot like what it looked before. It was the same folks, just in greater numbers, not entirely, but I think, um, so I'm not opposed to Zoom. I think it does improve accessibility for a lot of different people, but I also think we need to make sure to not be too enamored by that um, as solving the deeper issues. Um, if you have time to sit in a four hour Zoom meeting, you probably have time to come to City Hall and sit in a four hour meeting. And if you don't have four hours, it doesn't matter whether it's on Zoom or not. Um, that's an oversimplification, of course, but I think, again, just to sort of signal that I think we need to sort of go deeper into some of those issues because that that's not gonna be a, a, a silver bullet. Um, it seems to me too that, that one of the things about sort of gathering gathering information, sharing information about the different committee opportunities is that um, I think the different level of um, commitment, time, intensity, um, um, impact, uh, politi politicization, I mean, just the different elements of the different boards and commissions function very, very differently. And some are um, you know, you're going to be meeting until midnight and some are going to last for an hour. And so I think one of the things we probably might want to do is try to just gather more information so that people who are considering getting involved could actually look at the website and say, okay, if I'm going to join the planning board, I have an idea of what that personal commitment would take from me versus if I'm going to join, I don't know, the Parks and Rec Commission, um, you know, just what whether that's something that they could reasonably expect to take on. Um, so I'd like to see some kind of data gathering about the existing boards and commissions, about the opportunities that are out there, and also, as others have been saying, about um, sort of what's happening so far. What are the demographics of the people who are currently serving, um, as much as we can find that out, who's applying, um, and, and um, how do those compare to the demographics of our city um, as, as a starting point? I think um, figuring out what data we have will help us figure out what data we want and then what we might be able to reasonably try to collect in the scope of this committee. Absolutely. Uh, Jamila. Um, I agree with what everybody has been saying. Um, I think I think Zoom has really opened up a lot of accessibility for people um, to serve on commissions and committees. I know, I mean, I, me and Councilor Perry just had a meeting for city council and we were able to come to this meeting right after um, because they're on Zoom. And um, I also agree uh, that, you know, we could, we could look into compensation. I think that might be something that could, I mean, I don't think, I don't think it's going to, Hey, you know, I think it, it might entice people to to want to be more involved. I mean, who knows? I think it's something that we should look into. Um, it's not something that we should totally take off the table. And um, also, I think it's a good idea what Jana said to have some kind of definition of each commission because some of them do have, you know, more requirements than others. And I also think word of mouth is how people get to know about commissions, like people who are on commissions tell people I'm on this commission, I'm on this committee. 
and then they might tell their friend to apply. So I think we have a wealth of resource in people who are already on these committees and commissions. Um, and that's that's why there's two people on, you know, three people on this uh, committee right now who are on commissions and committees. But I think, you know, the word of mouth is really a, a big way to like get the word out about, about how you can serve on, on these different, you know, uh, community commissions and committees. And, and I think that that could be a really helpful way to, to get the word out. When? I, I liked what Jana had to say, you know, because now I'm thinking, you know, what if we looked at the duration of meetings over the last two years, you know, for each committee and board, and then did an average, like a medium of um, the average amount of time per week, somebody, or, you know, average amount of time somebody might expect to, to take time out of their schedule to, to serve on committees. And so that is kind of some of the data that I would be curious about, as well as, um, you know, I think demographics is great. Um, I, I think that's a good idea um, because, you know, how many boards do we have? Eight or more? Um, you know, each ward might have its own unique issues um, in terms of demographics. So in terms of, you know, getting people to serve from equal standpoints and things. Yeah, yeah certainly it's going to be, also certainly it's a good idea, right? But also we need to, there's going to be a sort of dramatic difference in time serving when you talk about established board compared with, uh, with, with uh, groups that are advisory in nature that they last a couple of months, right? So, but I, I'm taking notes, Gary. <laughs> um, hold on a second, let me lower my hand. I, I, I love this discussion, first off. Um, you know, just sitting here, a couple things across my mind. Um, Janice said is that uh, learning a little bit more about what committees and boards do, I think would be very important because I know when I joined the city council, it was a mystery. I don't know how Councilor Gore feels, but there, there was, I was nervous. I didn't, you know, I, I had talked to a number of counselors. I talked to people before I even threw my hat in the ring, but there wasn't much guidance. And so I would like to, as a goal for this uh, group, is to look into the process of onboarding, um, just having people have have a kind of a grasp of what they're really getting into, not just for times of commitments, because I think um, in terms of while it sounds good to to look at how long a meeting will last, I think that that data is not going to really do much for us because what I found in city council was that some meetings last for 35 minutes for and some could go for four or five hours, you know, and so you know, it, it all depends on what you're discussing, you know, and, and wh whether you're a planning board, if you're trying to do some infill stuff versus like approving, you know, a smaller thing. It, it, so the, I don't think those numbers are really gonna help your average person gauge whether they wanna be involved in it. Um, but what I really do wanna see is just a little more information about what the commitment and how, how some of the things work, you know, um, so that that would be great for me. And then in terms of outreach, I think that we should look at bringing in people like Sean Donovan um, from the Department of Community Care, because when we talk about you know people being able to come to Zoom, you know we have a whole houseless population, and we have some underrepresented populations that uh, may not have access to Zoom or the internet and things like that. And so uh, through through this committee, I would like to really look at how. Uh, when we go out and get data, how we're getting it and, and who we're going to and how we're aggregating it. Um, and we do have some resources in the city to help us guide that. So, so yeah, this is this is interesting, Gary, that you're mentioning that when, so one of the big challenges that we ended up having in our Hampton Police Review Commission was testimonies, right? 
people being able to put the time and effort to be able to give testimonies. And that's something I, that I personally work with Sean for months uh, doing outreach to the unhoused population, to the to affected communities in relationship to, but also it's sort of complicated. And I think I mentioned a little bit about this when Cynthia mentioned um, in our organizational meeting that, you know, we also need to look in those people who are eternal applicants and never heard, right? And never chosen, right? That is complicated because when we start talking about so personal experiences, we don't live in a city like New York or you know even Boston where you're gonna get thousands of testimonies. You're gonna get sort of a pretty limited amount of testimonies that it's pretty easy to reverse engineer to try to figure out who gave that testimony, right? So, and that's, that's one of the biggest challenges when you are sort of trying to get that sort of database and experience, right? But certainly that bringing Sean with the, you know, with, with all the, the outreach that we already did with our Hunter Police Review Commission is a great idea. I just want to be clear. So we have uh, a little more than 20 minutes. I'm leaving the last 10 minutes to talk about uh, a schedule in our next meeting and uh, a specific agenda points that you guys would like to see in that one. Okay. So technically what 10 more minutes of discussion. Um, so, so in the meantime, so what I have, um, and Laura, I think I'm going to be sort of talking to you during the week about the, how to get the data that we are sort of mentioning. Um, so, and I have sort of a list that I already uh, taken and, and, in, in, and in relation to how much, you know, the boards, uh, sort of the workload and how much commitment they are, I think would be good for us to be able to talk to the chairs of those boards. Uh, to get sort of an up-to-date right now, if you would serve in this board, this is what is expected to you. This is the amount of hours that we put. This is a realistic thing rather than, you know, no, it's just going to be like two hours during the week and nothing else. And it's never like that. So <laughs> I think it would be good for us. So that's, we're going to start that with Jamila working on that uh, and Pamela um, and probably trying to get, um, Sean to, to visit us uh, in next or two more meetings. When? I love what Garrick had to say about, you know, he referred to it as onboarding, but maybe I, I could also refer to it maybe as mentoring or sponsoring um, when somebody comes into a position. Um, you know, that could be really helpful and maybe eliminate some of the nervousness or anxiety or fear that someone might have. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, it's funny because uh, when we met with Jamila to sort of organize this meeting, we talk a little, we talk, we mentioned about the, the, the need of mentorship and sort of the more guidance for newly elected officials or newly people sort of serving in, com in commissions. Um, and also, and I, I, I want to put this again in the forefront, uh, privilege right? Privilege of time, privilege of money that comes with time. Um, I can, I, I feel, as you can see, I feel pretty free of say whatever comes to my head because I think it's relevant to say it. I'm not double thinking or maybe better not say this. That's also privilege. Uh, in the 10 top priorities in my life, I can place something like this in top 10 right now. And the population that we want to be able to be added to serving for the city, giving advice to the city, is the kind of population also that this is not going to be in the top 50 priorities because there are so many priorities before that, right? And sort of recognize that. And, and, and also if, if, you know, testimonies and also participation and, and adding public comment and working for that kind of population to show up and giving the option for public coming to that kind of population so we understand better. And I do feel that, that we have a wide representation of the members here that is gonna help a lot with that. Gary. Sorry, I just can't help myself with my hand. Um, and I think following what you said also is 
uh, sort of comfortability being in environments like this. You know, there is, I, I believe, kind of a mystique about government and, and governing bodies that, you know, there's shady backroom deals or, or whatever people have feelings. And, you know, the, the people that I think we really want, whether it's you know, like we want diversity and we want people who have these different ideas, but there is a little bit of trepidation jumping into to this. And, you know, I, for me personally, like I've, I've spent most of my life in the public view, I, I do entertainment. And so like, it's easy for me to talk with people. And so I think that, um, you know, looking at ways to demystify all of this, you know, whether it's what we're expecting from committees, but also we've also mentioned, um, the process, the transparency of, of what happens, those steps. Um, and I know that last meeting we discussed bringing Court Klein in. And so I just wanted to bring that up again, because in addition to Sean Donovan, we should you know, do some outreach so he can walk us through what the process is and, and whatnot. Absolutely. Jamila. Also, I think, you know, another thing that can be a barrier is feeling like you're qualified to be on certain committees or commissions, you know, feeling like if you have, or do I have the expertise to do that? Oh, no, I don't. So that's why it's, it's sometimes nice to have somebody to kind of encourage you to be on it or say, oh, I'm on this, you should, be, you should try this out or, or have, you know, like onboarding something like that, because a lot of times I think people, they don't know that they're qualified to actually be on these boards and commissions. Yeah, and, and that goes hand to hand with what Garrick said, right? The dismythification of the, the office. Do I think that every single city councilor knows about the budget and understands the budget? Nope. I don't trick myself on that. No, no, right? But that's the reason why you have department heads. That's the reason why you have an auditor. That's the reason why you have a city solicitor. Right, so the information is for you to look for it, even if you that don't have an idea. Maybe in your third or fourth budget, you're going to start understanding better, you know, appropriations, right? And I think that that goes to speaks highly of what you're saying, Jamila, and what Gary also say. Five more minutes, and we will start talking about what we're doing for next meeting and dates. Uh, Cynthia, I think I I think Mara had her hand up before me, so I'll just Mara. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking, um, you know, I think that barriers to political participation on a local level are not, is not a novel thing. It's been well studied all over the US and, you know, and we know that it's not inclusive. St several studies all over the country have shown that across counties, it's always lack diversity. And I think that one thing that people who participate in local government want to know is that their time is worth it, like that they're having an impact on their local community. And I think that that is something that a lot of committees um, kind of fail to get across at least is that their participation is having some sort of impact at least on a meaningful level rather than, you know, just showing up and talking about certain issues, but that you're actually making some sort of progress. And I think that appeals to people in the community and people want to be part of a community, but they want to know that their time is going towards something worthwhile. Absolutely. But also, also, also that speaks to the city having the responsibility of creating commissions that are relevant to the people, right? Um, and that actually those decisions are going to be heard, the recommendations are going to be heard and that actually those recommendations are gonna change the everyday life of people, right? Completely. Cynthia. And just the other side of this, I mean, I, I just have to remember the date of December 28th, um, 2021, when the Board of Health was bombed with um, anti-Semitic and white supremacist um, visitors to, to our meeting. Um, and that's a humbling experience, you know, and so, and we're, we're seeing this all around the country, right? And so some people might be like, I, I don't want that to happen to me, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be exposed to that. So it's, um, um, you know, you have to kind of believe in what you're doing. And so the more that we can prepare individuals, and I'm not saying that this is what's going to happen, but city council goes through that all the time. Mayors go through that, they're elected officials. And these are people that are 
serving on their own free time and they can get slapped around a little bit for, for, for their ideas. So um, that could be a barrier. I, I don't know. Absolutely. So um, is it okay if we transition to talk a little bit about the next meeting? So just, just to let you know, a lot of notes, um, there is a lot of things that we're going to try to make happen, including people visiting us, uh, including sort of asking that and now so we have it in two or three more meetings. Um, so hopefully that's 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 going to happen. Um, schedule. So I, I would like to talk a little bit uh, for our next meeting in Jenna. I was I for my life, I was not able to think a way to try to secure the next five meetings. Uh, we struggle a lot with the doodle poll uh, to get this meeting across. So I feel that that was a that that was a success. Uh, so the first, uh, are we meeting in uh, two more weeks or one more week? That that's the first question that I have for you guys. So it would be let me say uh, the first week of July or the week of the 27th, which is next week, or the week of uh, that, it would start with uh, July 4th, Monday. So it would be July 5, 6, 7, or 8. I'm receiving uh, suggestions right now. And just making an assumption, Javier, are, are these evening meetings? Just it's up to us. It's up okay. to us. So let's let's talk a little bit if we want in next week or two more weeks, and after that we can talk about. I'm open to whatever the group decides, uh, including and I want to say this: sometimes commissions to make more accessible at med either a Saturday or a Sunday. I, I'm not saying that it's it's a norm, but sometimes when you are when you want sort of a high volume of public speaking and you are creating sort of a, a specific meeting for public speaking, you may want to do it sort of in a, in a, in a, in a sort of a weekend, right? So I'm, I'm open to whatever you guys want to do. Um, the, maybe we should meet again uh, the first week of July after the parties. Is that a yes? I, I see when to just on board with it. So, I can do either, either week. Either week is fine with me. Mara? I'm also okay either week. I don't, I think maybe next week may be more helpful just to start getting things off the ground and then transition back into two weeks, but either is fine. Okay. I'm good with next week as well. If we can pull it off and if we can't, then we go to the, the B plan. I, I actually, can do next week as well. I have a week and a half off from shows, so I'm around. I can do I can do next week. Um, it's my final exam week, but the meeting is only about an hour, so that's not a problem. And I'll probably need a break from my finals. So excellent. So I just want to clarify because of the time and the date right now. If thanks to uh, Pamela's coaching, I know that we would only be able to uh, access uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because uh, if we post tomorrow, that means that we would be able to meet. If we post tomorrow, we cannot, we're, we we're gonna be able to meet Wednesday, right? Well, actually, the, the reason why it was Wednesday last the, for this time, for the holiday? Was Monday was the holiday. So okay. you could have a meeting Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Okay, as long as it's posted tomorrow. Okay, yeah. actually, and I have I have a meeting that I'm committed to on Wednesday night. Um, that is from 7.30 to 9. I'm in the same position, Gwen. So okay. is Thursday or is that city council? Now city council on Thursday. Okay, so uh, Thursday would be Thursday the thirtieth. Thirtieth. Okay, so 
of Thursday 30th, I would like to do, you know, reaching for the stars an hour and a half. As, as you see, one, one hour just flight. It's it's crazy. Yes. Would that be possible? Thursday, 30th, June 30th, um, an hour and a half. Fine with me. Excellent. What time on the list would be good? Five? Five to six thirty, six to seven thirty, seven to eight thirty. I'm I can do whatever those times, and if early, also I can accommodate. Let me see my calendar. I think seven to eight thirty is best for me. You mean seven to eight thirty? Yes. Okay. There's seven to eight thirty. Is that okay with everybody? Cynthia, Mara, Jamila, Jana, Gary. Ex excellent. Okay. excellent. Want to go? Want to go for one more? Seven to eight thirty. You're tenting your luck, Cynthia. Let's <laughs> the following week, two weeks from there. Okay. Okay. I'm not. I'm. Okay, so that would be that would be uh, two weeks from the week of the thirtieth, right? Yeah. Okay. So that would be the week of July eleventh, right? Yes. Um, Are we going two weeks out or one week out? I think we can do two weeks after that one. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. That Thursday, the city council meeting. Okay. I'm going to be away all of that week uh, and cannot attend any meetings. Okay. So, sh so should we go to the previous week, the, the week of the fourth? People might be away. Yeah, that, that would, yeah, let me see. The... Yeah, I mean, um, 30th. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, if we, so what about the Thursday of the week of the four, which would be Thursday, July 7. Is that okay with everybody? That's fine. Um, honey, are you, uh, personal note, are you going to be doing an open mic that day? Oh, I cannot do, I, I cannot do okay. a meeting that day. Okay. <laughs> Wait, can we come to the open mic? I want to know. Where yeah, that. where's that yeah. happening? It's oh, clandestine. Maybe we should have an open mic meeting. That would be fun. Come. Gonna bring my guitar. Seriously, yeah. Just, Garrick, just, do you play? I, I I bring words. Okay, that's right. cool. That's cool. <laughs> so, um, Wednesday of that July six, maybe. Okay, Mara, yes, yeah, Jess, Gary, do, yes. That date I could do um like five five to six thirty or I can do that. I can't do five to six on that day. Okay. You can, Jamila? No. Um what about um what about Friday the eighth? No. I would. That would be fine with me. Oh uh, yes. Hold on. That, that's payday, so I'm happy usually. So. <laughs> I work on that day. Okay. No. What about Tuesday of that week? Uh, or I already said it. No, Tuesday. No, it's um, not hell. I can't. This this is a group that I know. This is a group that I know. That the the, the <laughs> setting. The thirtieth is just, a, just an illusion. This is a word. This yeah. is a. Let's go to Tuesday the twelfth. No, uh, Jan is not going to be around. Yeah, I yeah. think we're going to hit into vacations. I, I mean, I'm. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So let's, do, let's, do, let's do something. I think this is it's good that we came with 
uh, June 30th, 7 to 8.30. So I'm gonna send a doodle poll now. So we're gonna have two weeks to be able to do it. Okay. Right? okay. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna skip the, the week that you cannot do, Jenna, because I really want everybody to be here, right? Uh, is that okay with everybody? Excellent. Yeah, I'm I'm away the next week that Jan after Jana comes back, I'm away that week. So I'm I'm away that week as well. I'll be in okay. San Diego for Comic Con. All of you are way too fancy. Uh, <laughs> for the record, the official record, I'm going camping in Vermont. I'm gonna be at a state park. It is not fancy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not, not glamping, Jana. <laughs> no. Saying that you're camping in a state park in Vermont is like supposed to be everywhere. <laughs> So literally right. everywhere. <laughs> Pretty yeah, just some, somebody's backyard, but yes. If it works for I, I mean, I think we're gonna continue to encounter this that especially in the summer month. So if it's collectively works better for everybody else to meet that week of the eleventh, then I have to miss a single meeting, so be it. So, you know, do with that what you will, but excellent. So and I'm gonna ask for your trust in my discretion and Jamila's to build the agenda for next meeting, if okay. that's okay with everybody. Sure. Um, and this is quickly because we have one more minute. So public comment, uh, probably what what we can do the first time is to add sort of a, a, a you know, 50 minute public comment at the beginning. Okay. Uh, not only that, no. Council Curry. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. I think the public comment is gonna be very important for what we are doing. So we should definitely include it. Um, I don't know if there'll be much public comment at the start of this. So if we, we, could, we could put it on the agenda for the first, but we're really in this organizational period where, yeah. You know. What I would say though, I would encourage every, uh, Pamela. I, I just, your transcription came at 50 minutes, five, zero minutes, but did you one mean five. 15, one, yeah. five? Yeah. Okay, okay. I just wanted yeah. to clarify. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Pam. <laughs> no, yeah, it fine. just can't transcribe that way. So yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, um, what I would say though, as soon as the uh, the the agenda is sent out, uh, I would uh, encourage everybody here to start sharing the fact that there is going to be public comment, just sharing on Facebook with friends, with family, with neighbors, so people mm -hmm. start sort of being aware that we exist. Right. Is, Okay. <laughs> Which is the first step to get people. We are here, we exist, we're meeting, right? Excellent, excellent. I think so, too, Javier, too, we might want to consider, because uh, I think city council does this, limit the time during public comment so that it doesn't take away our whole meeting. Um, if that's yeah. a consideration, I don't want to cut people out, but knowing that I, up front. I see that as a positive problem. If we get right. to a point that it's way too many people and we have to, I would love that problem. <laughs> right. That is a good problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but also, I mean, Council Perry, Jamila, if you guys can, uh, in communications from the City Council, mention that we're meeting, that this is happening, we would really appreciate that too. Okay. Excellent. So I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. And a second. Second. Second, second. Pamela. And since there's no public here, does anyone mind if I just call you by your first name to, to do the role here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gwen. Yes. Jana. Yes. Jamila. Yeah. Garrick. Yes. Susan. Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Javier? Yes. Perfect. Thank, Thank you.